like it is about 5 30. Um, so I will go ahead and welcome everybody. My name is Lindsay Arthur and I am the um, A&R agent in Bourbon County and I have with me tonight Ray Tackett who is our horticulture agent in, Ray, in Bourbon County. Um, we thought this marketing for our all series that um, is put together by CCD was a um, great opportunity for some people across the state. Um, this is advertised in Central Kentucky. So um, there will be a few people on from different counties that we have in here, but we're excited um, to offer this to you guys for the next three Wednesdays from 5.30 to 6.30 um, for those of you who signed up. So I will go ahead and turn it over to Ray to introduce um, our speakers tonight. Like Lindsay said, thanks uh, for those of you that have joined us uh, so far. We may have a couple more join um, here just a little bit later on, but we'll go ahead and get started with Brett Wolf. Um, he is one of the speakers tonight, I believe the first up of the A team. We had a discussion of that uh, earlier, but Brett is an extension specialist with the University of Kentucky um, Department of Ag Econ Economics. Uh, I know Brett through his work with the Center for Crop Diversification. He's worked with uh, price supports from everything from price supports to the web, I guess, the, the design of their web pages and, a, and a, a little bit of everything in between. But we really appreciate uh, them taking the time to kind of do this three part series for us. Just a couple of real brief announcements, Brett, uh, before you get started, we will be monitoring the chat box. So if you guys have questions about topics as we go along, just feel free to go ahead and type those questions in the chat box and we can take care of those um, towards the end of the meeting or towards the end of the meeting. We usually will have a time where if you can't put a question in the chat box, we'll go ahead and just unmute at the end of the meeting. Um, but Brett, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ray. And Camille, if you wanted to go ahead and start your screen share, just to make mm -hmm. sure you can get the, the PowerPoint rocking and rolling there. If we're the A team, uh, we were talking about who's who. I think if I'm, I have the BA Baracus haircut, but my gold chains are at the jeweler uh, getting repaired today. So the full outfit's not, not available, but we appreciate y'all joining us. Um, as Ray mentioned, we, we work in the Department of Agricultural Economics, but specifically uh, tonight we're, we're representing the Center for Crop Diversification. So this is a group focused on specialty crops. So that's fruits, vegetables, ornamentals, specialty crops as defined by the USDA. Lots of those things that are great at our farmer's market stands as well as at uh, CSA and other kinds of um, lots of direct markets, but also wholesale markets. And so this program grew out of a desire to support folks who are selling that type of stuff. And it's a little bit in the line of a marketing 101 type of uh, content. So we have some other programs through the Market Ready program, some of you all may be interested in. But today, tonight, we'll be talking about social media basics, part of the overall some basics and introductory into that, uh, that world of direct marketing. Um, and and selling these types of products now i'll say if you aren't selling just if, if this does not just apply to specialty crops there are a lot of lessons in here that would apply to other things like uh, meats and value-added stuff as well but that's kind of our, our point of focus and to that point i want to just give a quick shout out and thank you to the funding for developing this came in part from the kentucky proud or sorry the kentucky department of agriculture administers the specialty crop block grant program which is money that comes from the USDA to try and help develop things to support specialty crop producers. And so we really appreciate the funding for that. Um, my last little plug is if you have not gone and checked out the Center for Crop Diversification website, which is just www.uky.edu slash CCD, um, I would really encourage you to do that because everything that we're gonna be talking about here tonight references some of the things that are available there, including the farmer's market price reports that Ray mentioned. We have those every week throughout the season, posting prices from across Kentucky uh, for real products in real time. That's products at Kentucky Farmer Markets. We post the prices. We also do a produce auction price reports, keep track of those, along with hundreds of publications, some other video content, uh, and a whole lot of other stuff that's aimed at this particular type of product and group uh, information. So. Um, yeah, and Ray mentioned that to, if you want to get in the chat to ask questions or uh, if you have comments or anything like that, feel free. Later on, I'll, I'll ask you or plead with you to fill out an evaluation for us. But 
uh, with not any further ado, uh, I'm speaking first here, but as far as covering content, I'm going to hand it over to Camille first, who's going to get us started. Camille joined our team uh, this past year. She's been doing a wonderful job, uh, graduate from the Ag Econ Department. Is that, that's right, yeah? Yep. And uh, she's been working with a variety of different projects and is excited, I think, to, to be able to speak with you all tonight. So I'll turn it over mm -hmm. to her. And unfortunately or fortunately, you're not done with me quite yet. She'll hand it back to me about halfway through and I'll finish us up. Um, so thanks very much. And Camille, take us away. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Camille Dant. I'm an extension associate with the university. Um, this is my very first presentation, so bear with me here, but uh, hopefully everything that we talk about today, you all will be able to take home and learn a lot from. So here is social media basics. Um, and here is our contact information. If you do want to jot that down, it, it will show back up at the end of the presentation as well, if you don't catch it. Um, but let's get started. So what messages matter? Um, there is more than just the product that you are selling to your customers. Um, you're also selling a message about you, your farm, and why your product is the best. So we'll start with locality. Um, locality focuses on the fact that your product is local to the area. Um, for example, say with the purchase of these tomatoes, you're helping a farmer 10 miles down, uh, down the road from where they live. So you're not just helping uh, your local community, but you're also helping the local economy as well by purchasing local products. So this is one of the messages that we like to promote is that, you know, say that your product is local, you know, make it known that you know, I sell these tomatoes and it'd be great if you were to buy them for me because you're not only just supporting me, you're supporting our local economy. Uh, our next message is relationship. So th with this, you want to build a, a trust through establishing personal connections with your consumers. Um, if you're a veteran, per se, uh, connect with potential customers through your story of your shift from the armed forces to becoming a farmer and your passion for the produce and, or products that you sell. Uh, if you are a generational family farm, tell your family story. Um, you want to connect with your consumers through your stories and creating those trusting relationships. Transparency, you wanna be open about your product and your farm. Uh, be honest and have open communication with potential customers about how you grow, say your tomatoes or how you milk your cows. Let them know how it all works. And then quality. So quality is, it's multifaceted. Um, it's variable based off of sizing, flavor, the shelf life, attractiveness, and there's so many more factors. Um, this will also vary based off of your market channel, but you want to establish that your product is the best quality on the market, no matter where your product is being sold. Moving on to product. Um, so when you talk about your products, uh, freshness was the most cited reason with taste being number three for consumer reasons to buy local foods. Um, when you market a product, these are some of the keywords and qualities you want to mention when putting it out onto the market. We have the freshest tomatoes with the best taste. Those keywords can help make your product stand out compared to the others out there. Uh, consumers have shown increased interest in healthy, safe, and fresh foods. These interests increase the likelihood of buying local. When they can hear that straight from the farmers, they are more likely to buy those local products that are being offered. Moving on to Facebook. So Facebook has a huge user base with over 3 billion active users each month. Um, you have the option to pay for boosted ads. Um, these are ads that you create from posts on your Facebook page. So boosting can help you get more messages and views on your page. This does cost money though. So depending on how long you want certain posts to be boosted, um, it will depend on how much you will pay for that service. I believe when I looked, it was a dollar per hour. So if you wanted a certain post boosted, you would have to pay a dollar per hour for however long um, that post needs to be out there. 
ads are, are similar to boosting, um, but you can get more advanced customized solutions with this route. Uh, ads focus more specifically on your set target audience, whereas boosts can have a broader reach. You would want to use the ads manager for more advanced ad types and campaigns, depending on your overall goal for your Facebook page. Uh, boosting and ad management could be money well spent, or it might not be something you're interested in. It just depends on if you feel like you want to reach a broader audience on if you kind of want to pay for the boosting or ad management. Facebook is slowly getting older uh, with newer social media outlets popping up. TikTok is one of the newest ones out there. Um, however, it still does have the largest amount of consistent users. I had mentioned earlier, it has 3 billion active users each month. Um, so it still is a great tool for online marketing, um, social media marketing. It also includes built-in evaluation tools. Um, this is called Insights for Facebook. Uh, Brett will go over Insights more later on, um, but just a quick little snapshot of what they kind of go over is um, they provide information about your page's performance, like demographic data about your audience and how people are responding to your posts. Keep in mind, you can only access data in page insights for the last two years and demographic data such as age, gender, location, they're available in the insights once there's data for 100 or more people. So if your page has 98 likes or 98 followers, you won't have any data until you reach that 100 count. Pages uh, that are categorized as community pages don't have insights. So if your page is categorized as community or personal, you would need to have your page categorized as a business page to be able to access these in, um, analytics. Moving on to Instagram. So Instagram has a younger user base than Facebook does. The younger user base is, uh, is more tech forward and it does tend to, they do tend to use this platform over Facebook. There are less users than Facebook on Instagram, but there is about 1 billion users that are active each month. Deciding to use either platform would kind of be focusing mostly on who falls into your target market. So if you're looking to kind of focus on those that are older, who have families, Facebook might be the, the service you would consider to use more. But if you're looking to kind of find a younger clientele that you want to keep, you know, build that trust with, Instagram might be that source for you. Hashtags are hashtag important. Uh, it allows you to easily find posts that are specific to what you're looking for. Um, so if you hashtag a post as, say, hashtag Kentucky Proud, and someone searches uh, for that, your post will be listed among any that utilize that specific hashtag. Uh, so those that search for the hashtag Kentucky Proud would be able to see your page and can have that option to interact with it. Instagram is, it's a little harder to evaluate than Facebook, but it does have an insights tab. So very similar to the Facebook insights. Um, I think they named them the same since now Facebook owns Instagram, uh, but it is constantly being updated since more and more people are beginning to use Instagram for their business. So it is becoming more user-friendly and easier to understand. Instagram allows for good photo editing. So you can edit your photo directly on the app rather than having to download, say a photo editing app and then upload it into Instagram. So you can do it all in like one, one shot. Um, you just put, the put your picture up and then you can add whatever filter you want or you know, edit out, blur out anything that you might not wanna show in the, whatever the picture is. But, so, but it's an, a one-stop shop for photo editing on Instagram. Uh, you can also link your Facebook page. Um, now that Facebook owns Instagram, you can link both your Facebook and Instagram pages together so you can reach across each platform. So here's just a quick uh, overview of the Instagram analytics. Uh, Camille, before, before you move on to Instagram, could I just inject one thing real quick? Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, so what Camille's done here is, is this really nice 
way of laying out two different, I think, concepts. The first thing that she talked about is what math, what messages matter. And so that that is to say, as we think about Facebook and Instagram as tools for communication and think about all those pros and cons that she just talked about, part of it is also thinking about and understanding what your goals are for your business and what types of messages you want to be sharing and, and should be thinking about sharing most effectively. And so as we move into the analytics and, and assessing whether or not the messages are being effective, whether you're reaching people or not, some very simple to do's and, and not to do's that we'll talk about in a few minutes, just take a second to, to think in your mind, like for you and your business and what you're trying to share with people what are some of the most important messages that you want to talk about? Is it the freshness Is it, and the quality? That's the thing that's really important to lots of people. Is it the fact that you're local? Is it the fact that you're in Bourbon County or you're in Kentucky or whatever? Um, what is the most important message? And then think about using these just as tools rather than the intimidation of, oh, this is high tech or this is really confusing or it's too much. Thinking a little bit more about these are just tools for communicating a message. So that's just the, I, I, sometimes I'm a little slow, so I, I like try to recap and, and make sure I'm, I'm keeping track. So um, just, yeah, sorry for the interruption, but I just thought I'd interject there. No, you're fine. That was, that was good. Um, so going off of, you know, the message and if your message is make, reaching a broader audience, uh, we have Instagram analytics, which can help show uh, the interaction you get on your posts, on your stories. So um, it is only available. So Instagram analytics is only available if your account is a, set up as a business or creator profile. Um, so if, you're, if your account is per, uh, currently set up as a personal profile and you do switch it to business, there, there won't be any data as it only shows your account as set up when it becomes a business or creator profile. So if you have over a thousand followers, and your business is, is currently set up as personal profile, and then you switch it, you won't have any data until the date you start your profile as being a business or creator profile. But you are able to track up to 12 months of your posts and stories and see which ones have performed the best. Uh, you can monitor how many times visitors have clicked links to your website um, from your profile page. That's if you do have a website. I, you can also monitor if you have a link to your Facebook page in your Instagram um, caption. It'll monitor how many times someone has clicked that that takes them to the, over to their Facebook or to your Facebook page. You can use audience analytics, feed post analytics, and that's how your posts are interacted with, with likes or comments, et cetera. The story analytics, that's a, that stories are a big thing that consumers are starting to use and starting to look at um, when it comes to profile pages. Video, the reels, those are now taking over. I think they're Instagram's attack against TikTok. Um, and then you've got shopping analytics as well. If you are able to set up your page as a shopping uh, profile through Instagram. Um, and just as before, it is becoming more user-friendly as more businesses are starting to use Instagram as a platform. So hopefully in the future, if there are certain things that, you know, people are not really sure how to use, Instagram will kind of take that into consideration and change and make it a little bit more user-friendly. So some simple to-dos in regards to Facebook posts and Instagram posts. You wanna connect and reinforce your brand and message. Uh, you wanna show your followers what your brand is about and have confidence in your message with, with your brand or with your products. You know, If you say that your tomatoes are the freshest and have the best taste, reinforce that. You know, If it comes to posting a video of your daughter or your son or whoever it might be taking a bite of your tomato, and it, he's like, this is great. This is so good. Put that on there. Let your customers show or your consumers show that or see that these are great tomatoes and that you should buy mine over what they sell at Kroger. Upload great pictures. Make sure they are clear and you can easily see what product or whatever it is you are promoting. You don't want people to not be able to clearly see whatever you're showing with your post. So if it's, it's if you take a blurry picture, 
try and make, you know, if it's your, if you're shaking or whatnot, maybe set your phone down and set it up and you can take timer pictures. Um, so that way it's clear and you can make a post and that way someone knows, oh, this is a tomato, it's on an apple or whatever it might be. Be social, respond to comments, messages, reviews, anything you might receive. Um, a rule of thumb is to try and respond within 48 hours of any comments made so your followers know that you are interested in what they have to say and that you appreciate them interacting with your page. Be, be active on any platform that you use. You don't have to post all day every day, but try and have times where you are active on your page. Showing interest in what you care about will help your followers want to support your brand as well. So say if you have an event coming up, if you're gonna be at a farmer's market, um, make a post about it so that way your followers are aware and they can have an opportunity to support you at that event. Keep all information updated. That's you know what your website is, you know, your hours, your time. That goes into make, make the important information obvious hours, location, website, again, if you have a website, and then your contact information as well. And then cross promote on any form of social media you use on your Facebook page with your Instagram so that your followers can easily find you on that platform and vice versa, support all of your pages. And here we have some simple don't do's. Don't have a wall of text on your posts. You wanna keep it fairly short and simple so that way it keeps your followers in the know but also doesn't lose their attention. So if you have a post with three paragraphs worth, worth of information, the likelihood of them reading all three paragraphs is, is very slim. So if your followers have questions, they will reach out to you um, so that way you don't have to include all of that in three paragraphs long of text. Don't let your page go dormant. Keep it going, keep it updated. They, uh, that way people don't forget about your brand. They, that way they know, you know, if you post once a day, that way people know, hey, they're still posting, they're still producing, whatever it might be. I'm still interested rather than months from now, I'm gonna make a post. Oh, I forgot they existed. You don't wanna, you don't want them to forget you exist. <laughs> don't overshare. One post per day is plenty. It's all right if you do need to post again in a day, but don't, don't make it a habit to post six, seven times a day. Once a day is fine, but that, that doesn't include like commenting or anything. You know, if, if someone posts on a post, you can still comment back and be active with your social media. And then don't go off brand or off message. It's your business page. It's not your personal page. Keep it focused on the business only and the, serv and the services that you offer. And then here's a good example of the wall of text. Um, don't, don't do this. <laughs> you'll, lose, you'll lose interest very quickly. So just keep them short and simple. You know, get, the qual get your message in the first two sentences that you might wanna add. And if you need to add more information, or you're like, I'm not sure if they'll understand, you know, your followers, if they're interested, they will definitely reach out to you and, and ask questions. And that way you can respond that way. And Brett, I will hand it over to you. Okay, thanks Camille. Um, so I'm gonna be a wild card and I'm gonna ask to share my screen. So if you could unshare, I know I go against everything that we had planned out, but you know, I gotta get some excitement in somehow here. <laughs> Okay, cool. So I'm gonna open this here. So uh, Camille's the, the maybe the brains of the operation. So I'm gonna slow it down for myself and maybe for you too, um, and just say. So sometimes we think that uh, social media is this kind of like oh, this big thing, this big effort, or you have to be really high tech to know it or understand it. And some of the tips and, and tricks that people will give are they'll, they'll give examples of like Coca-Cola or a brand like some like the some of you all probably saw the QR code bouncing around on the screen on the Super Bowl cup and and the thing is those types of companies their marketing department their social media department probably looks like this maybe even bigger so your social media department probably looks something a little more like this with hands literally and figuratively already full and so as I 
think about that. If you're smart, you might recruit in somebody like this to run your social media because I guarantee this kid knows more about uh, effective TikToks than I do at this point. Um, but the point here is it doesn't have to be this big high-tech endeavor, but it does need to be part of, as many of those tips that Camille just shared with us, it does need to be part of an, a marketing strategy. This is not going to be a if you post it, they will come kind of deal. Uh, we need to be thinking strategically about the types of messaging that we're putting out there. And we cover some of those messages more in depth uh, in our marketing basics series, uh, specifically what types of messages are important to consumers in the local food world and also helping you to think about your brand and your identity. Um, notice I'm spending as much time with the cute baby on the picture on the frame so that in the evaluations you all are extra extra nice to us here um, but the it this is just a tool it's just like an implement for your tractor or a new bench for your greenhouse these are just tools and knowing how to use them and how to not get overwhelmed by them is an important part of that so in the next little bit the main part I'm going to be focusing on is both popping out into an actual browser window in a Facebook and showing you like where some things are located, but also emphasizing on the side of, is this even worth doing? How you can use some of the analytics tools and advertising to potentially uh, make social media work for you. But none of that is going to replace a good solid, found solid foundation and understanding of what the product is that you're marketing and what you're customers care about, because that is at the heart of all good marketing, is, is really having a strong understanding of that. So if you have not, and even I'm a broken record here, but if you have not, take a little bit of time to think about what the products are. And if you wouldn't, I mean, if you're in the, in the mood to, to be social, to practice your being social, um, drop in the comments and let us know what the products are that you, you all uh, sell or are thinking about selling or would like to sell. And uh, in, in the chat, that would be awesome to, to see that. So one of the things is, well, all this is very in, overwhelming in the world of analytics. The amount of information is, is kind of overwhelming. Here are some different quotes. Jeff Bezos, you all may have heard of him, um, somebody who's, who was already pretty wealthy, who's gotten even wealthier in the last few years, said that they will never throw data away. However, they also have warehouses full. Of, this is an Amazon facility, I believe, but they have warehouses full of uh, computer servers and, and that are able to do processing of this large amount of data. If you compare that, though, however, with Walmart, they're only using a, a targeted amount of data to make decisions about retail merchandising strategies. The point here being a company as big as Walmart doesn't even say, we want everything, we want all the tech, we want all the information. They're, they're thinking strategically about that. That's all we're doing here. And my point mainly here is thinking about analytics they only have value if they're usable. So values only derive when the, that, all that data, all that information from things like Facebook, things like Instagram, these tools that we're using. If we can turn it into insights and translate it into action and sales, that's where they have value. So that's great, Brett. Uh, thank you for helping us understand Amazon and Walmart and Bain Capital. What does that have to do with us? Well. Let's answer very simple questions using social media analytics. And to, to reiterate, as Camille said, you can only get this information that we're going to talk about here in a second if you've started a Facebook page that is a business page and or started an Instagram page that is an Instagram page. So if you haven't done those things yet, that's step one. If you have those, you'll be able to get access to some of this. So let's answer some actual questions that, and you'll notice the subtle change of background here to a farmer's market thing and this image is used everywhere because it's a free nice pretty uh downloadable stock image that says screams farmer's market so first question who are your customers you can answer that question in a million different ways um but thinking specifically about who are the people that maybe like your facebook page gender age do they have other kinds of interests um yeah all those kind of demographic type information what another question what content are they interested in? What content do they want? And maybe most importantly, if you're thinking about posting information onto your, onto your pages, when are they online? So these are three questions. Again, as we move from all the data, all the information, let's think about some very specific targeted questions that social media 
platforms can help us answer. And so related to that are these, these two things that I just want to show you. And I'm going to hop out of the, uh, like I said, I'm a wild card. I'm going to hop out of the PowerPoint and into a browser window and just show you how you can answer some of those questions. So I'm going to pop out here. I've got everything queued up. It's like uh, TV magic. I feel like Emerald. Got my onions chopped and ready to go in the pan. So uh, that last question that we asked, when are these people online? Because I don't necessarily want to post uh, uh, something and then have people not see it, right? I want to make sure that I'm posting at a time where people are going to be able to see it. So this is, we're looking here, um, if we go out to the actual, the main, let's see, what am I doing here? I'm just going to go back to my main landing page. So this is my personal Facebook page, and I manage a number of different pages on it. So I'm going to click on the Center for Crop Diversification. I mentioned the CCD. Now, if, if I'm boring you, this would be a great time to tune out and go over and like the CCD Facebook page if you haven't already. But if you're interested, you can stick with me here. So this is the new or, you know, this is the current way that the Facebook pages are laid out. Uh, there's lots of things we could cover here and we could do a more extensive overview of Facebook functionality if that's something that people are interested in. It's not something that's in our off the shelf offerings, but it's something we could do. In this sidebar over here is all kinds of fun different things. Um, we're gonna talk about the ad center here in just a second. We're gonna talk about the publishing, um, uh, publishing tools here in just a second. But before we do that, I wanna show you, this is that thing that Camille was talking about, analytics data, information, insights is what Facebook calls it. So I'm going to click on insights here. Real time, nothing, nothing too scary here, hopefully yet. Um, within insights, now this sidebar has changed and now I can see all these different page related insights. So first off, what was the first question I, I asked? I think it was, who are your customers or what are your customers like? Uh, so I'm going to go to people here. These are people who have liked our page. They're, they're our fans, our loyal fans. And hopefully some of you are either already among them or soon to be. Uh, so this is telling us a little bit about who these people are. Geographically, where they're located, not surprising. A lot of people in Lexington, um, a lot of people in the United States, but we're also huge in India, apparently. Number two, uh, number two following is in India. Um, we do have a lot of some international people. It's pretty interesting on our website and stuff, but uh, this isn't quite as interesting or surprising to me. What is interesting to know is that, and this isn't terribly surprising, but it's good to confirm and know, is that we are way, way more popular with women than we are with men. Um, first, first time in my life, I think that that happened, but um, in the horticulture world, that that cross section like that audience is is who we represent and, and who a lot of our growers are and so that's not terribly surprising information but uh, what is interesting is um the age discrepancy though it's pretty spread out which is pretty nice we don't hit a ton of really really young people if i were a business and this isn't about the ccd this is about your business and if you were looking at this if you are trying to target more women because your business sells food and you know that women make a majority of household food purchase decisions because you've done your market research and you might want to think about structuring your posts and aiming it at specifically targeting oh trying to make decisions about mealtime uh this is who you know we want there here's the things we have to offer this week or whatever um and then over time you can see if your audience is shifting and the demographic focus is shifting so um, who are your followers, kind of very similar. And then the people reached, which is a little bit broader net. Again, this isn't a total Facebook uh, crash course, but we're reaching people, maybe people who aren't our fans, who are in a little, maybe, maybe a little bit older age group. Um, so th this just gives you a little bit of food for thought on who your fans are and who over time you would like to reach and, and, and bring more into the fold. Uh, another thing was, what are those people interested in? So I, I have been a terrible, this is a do as I say, not as, uh, or do as I say, not as I do, but I, I haven't been super active on, uh, on this. And I have some slides that can show some more interesting stuff. But as we look back through uh, our recent posts, again, so over here, I clicked on this posts uh, section of analytics. Again, there's a lot of information there. We're just focusing on some very specific things that we're trying to answer. <clears throat> I see a couple 
of, of these that have a higher reach and a much higher engagement. So let's check, let's just click real quick and see this one here. For some reason, people love to see my ugly mug posted all over the social media. They'd like to see people's faces. It would be the same for Camille or for Savannah or for any of the other folks that we work with. But people like to see people. We respond well to faces. We respond well to knowing that there's another person in this crazy, disconnected social media universe. Um, let's see, that was not an intentional brag or flex or something. Here's another one. A wonderful new publication by Savannah Columbia. Shout out to Savannah, who's on the call tonight and she'll be presenting in a couple of weeks. Uh, a lot of excitement and likes and sharing and energy. So what this tells me is, this is the type of content that my folks, my people are interested in. The people that follow us are interested in this kind of stuff. So I may, if I were trying to pander to them, offer that kind of content more. You know, if you, the example that Camille gave earlier, if you post a video of your cute kid eating a tomato and saying, oh my gosh, this is so good. And people just go crazy about it. That might be something you want to integrate into your marketing to be able to reach more people and have them, um, see that you're a, a multi-dimensional business. The last question we asked, again, these are just examples of how analytics and how social media can help you understand and do some of your own market research. The last question we asked was, when are these people online? And so these are our followers, and this is when they are online. Nothing terribly uh, surprising about this. 5 a.m., we got some early risers in the farm community, clearly. Um, we also are across time zones, so there's a little bit of that uh, too. The, but we, we have this kind of like little peak here around 9 a.m. Now, I just intuitively guessed for a long time that we probably have a lot of people around that 8.30 window. So I'm going to schedule all of our posts at 8.30 a.m. And I did that for a while and it was good and we got all the reach and the same, a lot of the same people liking it, et cetera. Well, I actually went in and, and I did practice what I'm preaching here. I went into analytics and I looked and I thought, okay, I'm seeing a huge bump here, you know, relatively, and it used to be even more extreme. Um, we're missing this whole window here of where this is actually where the maximum number of people are. And just because I'm thinking of extension offices where there are, you know, and, uh, um, uh, Ray and Lindsay will back me up. They're just between eight and five, never any after hour programming at all. No, but as I'm thinking about the the business hours and people think in, in that mode, I was missing out on this whole window of time, which is around that just before dinner, waiting on dinner to cook, after dinner crowd. And we saw growth, both in the number of people who liked our posts, the types of people who were interested, um, it was just a, a way to actually apply this information in a way that helped us to expand. And all we're trying to do here is, is, is take a little bit of information to do a little bit of market research to try and get the right good messaging out in front of more people who may care and may come and, and, and interact with you. So that's, uh, I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my PowerPoint here. So those are those, those two. Oh, I didn't show you how to schedule posts. Let's go back. So as you can see, nothing too crazy here. So, so I'm gonna go back again and just take you in from the start. If you did not know this, you can schedule posts um, to, to post later on. So you're gonna, you can take that information that I just said and say, okay, I know that the people who follow my page are always online at 6.30 p.m. I'm gonna schedule this post for 6.30 p.m. but I don't wanna be sitting at my computer waiting to click at that moment. So you can do it in a number of ways. You can go into publishing tools, but let's just hit create post here and see what happens. Okay, so it brings up, if I was wanted to say, hey, everybody, CCD's presenting to Bourbon County right now, um, I could do that. But down here it says post scheduling, post scheduling is available in publishing tools. So you can click that. Same way you, if you clicked on publishing tools, you could go over there. My internet's gonna take a second to pull this up. And so, behind this thing here, I'm going to create a post. And so with what I could do here is I could, you know, put in my text about will be at whatever market, X time, X address. 
and maybe add a nice photo of something. Let's see, here's some stock photos I have of people that I've never met. Kind of a weird thing to have just available. Must be an extension thing. So it's gonna upload this picture. And so it's got actually two things that are really cool now. One, or one thing that's really cool now is optimal times. If you click on that, it'll actually tell you that information that I was just sharing with you. Like you, I went and said, look at that. Facebook recommended 6.30, I said 6.30 optimal where I'm fusing my brain is fusing with Facebook here not probably a good thing in the overall but if you didn't want to use the optimized time you could also just go down here and not not publish right now but say okay I actually want to schedule this post and tell it okay this is the time that I want to share um, you can schedule lots of these so when I was actively really on it managing and people weren't uh you know, necessarily tired of maybe some of the trainings and everything else, I would have, you, I would schedule two weeks at a time. I'd go on on a Monday and I would set up for two weeks. I want this to go out in the morning this day, this to go out in the afternoon the next day, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Taking advice from our friend Camille to not schedule six things every day. People don't want to see that. Once a day is fine. Less than once a day is totally cool. A couple times a week is, is totally fine. Uh, I would much rather see you consistently posting two or three times a week than post for three weeks every single day and then just completely drop off. Uh, and you could schedule these pretty far out. Uh, let's see, I just clicked off of that. Let's see. Yeah, you could schedule these out to like the end of May. So it's not like uh, you don't have to necessarily, um, you don't have to necessarily uh, do this every single week or every two weeks. You could actually do it you know, more often and leave yourself some space. We're gonna discard those changes. So the whole point here is again, we are using information that Facebook is passively collecting about our customers to make more informed uh, marketing decisions about how to share our messages with them. Ah. All right, back to the PowerPoint. Here are some other examples. Um, this is kind of what I showed before. This is back a screenshot back from the time when we didn't have as many, quite as many fans. Just a, a note, don't let this overwhelm you or anything. These same questions can be answered for a website using Google Analytics. Uh, so that's another topic for another day, but if you do have a website, you can also get at this information um, and see all kinds of stuff about when people are online and visiting, et cetera. And then here's another example. Um, Another example of just that that posts, the different posts and seeing how they perform and just keeping a mental tally of how that goes over time. Um, so yeah, so that, that's enough on that, I think. Another thing that social media allows us to do is what we would call targeted advertisement. The basic free stuff that you can do before you do the targeted advertisement that Camille was mentioning earlier is figuring out ways to create content that lets uh, your loyal customers share your product and talk about how wonderful your product is out to their friends. That's the nature of social media. Old school marketing was taking a product and telling people why they want it. Newer school social media marketing is getting other people to tell, up, tell their friends and family why they want your product. So there is a whole element of free dynamics on social media that can be covered. But targeted advertisement is something that this and very inexpensive, affordable advertisement is something this allows us to do. So um, this is a message that I talk about in all kinds of different contexts. The field of dreams, if you build it, they will come. It really is only a, an illusion. In the social media world, you're building, building your platform and then also engaging with people constantly and making sure that they're understanding what your products are and that you're a real person and why they want to buy from you, et cetera. Um, this is about the timing. And again, that, going back to that timing of posts, it's the same way with advertisement. In the on the internet, not everyone's tuning in to Seinfeld at seven o'clock. They're getting on their uh, getting on their phone at different times. They're getting on the computer at different times. Some people it's when their kids go to bed. Some people it's first thing in the morning. When the, some people it's at two o'clock when they're at work and they're looking for something that's more interesting than whatever they're doing at work. I've heard about that happening. I don't know if that ever happens. But um, the thing about this is the timing does matter and it's variable. And so this, there's tools that are available that can help us do that. 
the th one thing about some of the social media stuff and the ads, and if you've ever, we had I, the story I tell is that one time my wife and I had never even discussed getting married yet, but I was thinking about it, hadn't told anyone, and Facebook posted an, an ad for an engagement ring. And I was extremely creeped out because uh, no one I, it didn't hear me. It just like somehow knew something about me. So the more spot on it is, sometimes it can be creepy, but that's not really uh, your concern typically with the, you know, the businesses that you all are running, people like those. So uh, a couple of things I just want to show you where they are. I'm, I am keeping a little bit of an eye on the time so we don't, uh, I don't overwhelm or, or go too far, but Again, just to show you within Facebook, at least, how relatively simple this is. I'm going to pop this open here. Um, so again, go back to the main page. So down here, uh, we have this thing called the Ad Center. I'm going to click on that. Maybe. Now, it's going to give me this option of there's all kinds of stuff here. Uh, Facebook marketing is big business. Social media marketing is big business now, and they have tried to, to scale up with that, but it doesn't have to be overwhelming and crazy. Let's go with create an ad. Okay, so there's automated ads. That's something that I haven't played around with too much. It could be very, very good, and knowing the way that the, these algorithms work it is pretty good chance that it is. Create a new ad. That's the one I'm going to take a look at. Um, there's also this option to boost a post, which is to take a post that you already have out there and pay money that, so that the company will show it to more people. It's a little bit different from the advertisement. The advertisement is more like a campaign that you start from the beginning as an ad. Um, but let's go ahead and, and take a look at the create an ad interface here. Um, they have a lot of stuff where they're, they're willing to help you out. So how you, you tell them what you are looking for, what you want your ad to look like. I want it to be cool. I want it to be sleek. I want it to be rustic. I want it to be whatever. But you can also just go down here and you can change up the picture. Again, let's, let's try that one. I don't know if it'll, it may take a second for it to upload, but that picture will appear there. And then you can, you can structure these call to action kind of deals. So what is it that you want people to do? If you have a website, uh, you may want them to go and check out the website. And so you could learn more, they click on it, they go to your website. If you're trying to get people to contact you or sign up for your email list, there's different calls to action that you can do. Um, the other option is if you have created a post that you want to use as an advertisement, it says, you know, this year we'll be at X, Y, and Z, location every Saturday for market, you can create that post and then you can use that post in, to create an advertisement from that. And so let's say, for instance, uh, we want to promote one of Savannah's many amazing publications. We'll click here, use this post, and it's going to use that as like a basis for that advertisement. The cool thing, and when I say targeted, the thing that's cool about the targeting is the way that you can, it shows it up here, this estimated daily results, but down here, you can say, okay, people you choose through targeting, you can also select who your target customers are, and you can edit that. And so you can say, for instance, I want, let's go back to that example, forget this is a publication for a second, let's say I have a salad mix that would be awesome for a family salad, a family dinner, I want to target women. And let's say I want to bring this down and target women 25 to 45 for whatever reason. I, this, this is just kind of arbitrary. Um, I can also, if, I, if I'm going to only be selling in one location, uh, I may want to target Paris, Kentucky and within a, you know, within a, a, a radius of that. Uh, there's other detailed things. You, you can go in and play around with this, et cetera. And so with a hit this, this is going to save who my target audience is for these ads. I can then come down. I can say how long I want this to run for, give an end date if I want. And I can tweak this based on, so this is, uh, let's see here. This is the, the cost per day for seven days. If I want to bring this down, I can bring this down and it'll cost me a total of a dollar a day. And I won't reach quite as many people, but I can try it. I can bring it all the way up and say, I want to spend 500 bucks per day. Uh, 
Ooh, I'm no longer allowed to spend $500 a day. I must have done, I, I, I haven't advertised on this account before. So, um, you know, you can, you can play around with it. And, you know, it's one of those things that a little bit may not be enough to see much of a difference, but you can tweak this. And my point here is like, okay, to reach 500 to 1,000 people a day, this is going to be 10 bucks a day. Let's see here. And I want it to run for a week. That's going to be $70. So this is not $700. It's not $0, but it's also not, not if I'm, I'm old enough to remember regularly, my, my uncle operated a business and we would run ads in the paper. And we spent a lot more than $70 to run a very small little, not particularly customized ad in a newspaper, different art situation, but um, et cetera. So you, you could just add, you can pay with your credit card, not overly complicated. So it's really super targeted and the geographic targeting in particular is pretty, pretty neat. You know, again, I did acknowledge you may find it more on the creepy side of things, but it is a cool way to that levels the playing field on to some degree for people who are uh, running smaller businesses who don't have that huge army of people uh, to, to run ads. So we have had a number of people who have had good success with these advertisements. They're not a scam but they're also not a cure-all for not having a good marketing plan in the first place. My advice to anyone is always max out everything that you can do for free first. So get your posts scheduled regularly. Make sure that everything is updated. Post some nice pictures. I mean, it costs time, but as far as out-of-pocket stuff, get all of that stuff working first. Have a Facebook page first before you move on to a website because the Facebook page, you, other than time, you don't have to spend any money to have it. Do that first. If, if you feel like you got a pretty good handle on it, then consider going in and adding some money and doing some advertisement because it could really take you to the next level. But going in and spending a hundred bucks on advertisements, if you haven't taken your taken care of your page and you don't have everything updated and synced, isn't going to necessarily help you. You can't buy your way out of a problem, but you might be able to buy your way into some more success. Man, that came out that came out smoother than I thought it would. That last little uh, catchphrase. Okay, so I, I've set up these. You know, I kind of explained these two. Boosting the post is a very similar dialogue. It's just another way of doing it. Um, I hope that the main the thing you're taking away from that is this isn't terribly scary. You're not going to accidentally click something and they're going to send you a bill for five hundred dollars. You're going to have to enter your credit card information. Like it, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit of a, a, a couple steps before you before you do that and the other thing is it doesn't have to be prohibitively expensive so again get the business page set up think about that um max out everything for free there's other things that go on instagram but this is social media basics so we're just kind of covering what those things look like uh this is the old the old interface let's see here um so that brings me here more or less to, to the end of, of our advice for you. And before I go fully into that advice, nice. Alan Arthur said, I have an apple orchard and also a fruit tree nursery. Sweet. So I guess you're <clears throat> getting ready to do some pruning or maybe already doing some pruning and lots of other fun stuff. So I'm going to drop the link to the evaluation. If you would not mind to go over, just click over to that and fill it out for us. It's very, very brief. It helps us to uh, improve and make sure we're on on base, et cetera. So again, I'll drop that in the chat. If you do get a chance to do that, I have a little bit more content for you. Um, my, my general overarching advice, in addition to doing everything that's free first before you spend money on, that, on other things, is keep it simple. Don't need to build everything all at once. And ask for help if you need it. So uh, as, for, as for keeping it simple, to me, I would start with a Facebook page. It's going to give you, a, let you dip your toe in the water of doing this online social media marketing. If you like that, and that's working for you and you want to consider it, then maybe think about a website. Um, not everybody needs a website. Some businesses run perfectly successfully with just a Facebook page. Then maybe think about Instagram. Now, if, if you decide you don't want a website, but you want to get into Instagram, I'm all for it. But the main point here is don't feel that you need to have a Facebook and a Twitter and an Instagram and a Twitch and a, a TikTok and a everything else. Just take on as much as you can manage. These are just tools. If you, There's no sense in having a bunch of tools on the shelf that you don't know how to use or don't want to spend the time to learn how to use. Um, 
we're trying to trying to ultimately translate this into people selling more money or letting people or selling more products and letting people know that you exist. Uh, and the other thing is ask for help, just like with other things. It could be that you, as in your business, don't have time to do all of the harvesting and all of the packaging and everything else. And so you bring in other people to help. It could very well be that maybe uh, your business partner or a family member or someone has more experience and more interest in this, or there's a kid uh, that maybe from the local school or something like that, that you could maybe hire as a part-time social media manager to be able to handle this. It doesn't always just have to be straight up, you know, you figuring all this out at once. But it doesn't have to be scary. Keep it as simple as you can and establish that you can manage it before you move on and explode out into, into your, um, before expanding your social media empire too far. So with that, uh, Camille, did you have any thoughts you wanted to follow up with? Or uh, we can open it if there are questions or thoughts or anything else. Again, if you would not mind to fill out that evaluation, that would be great. No, I, I think you did a, a great job. And yes, please ask any, any and all questions you might have. Or you know, if it's something that you don't think about today and you think about in two days or two weeks, you know, our contact information is down. So please, please send us emails. We are more than willing to answer any and all questions you might have. Looks like uh, Alan did have one more uh, question there at the very end. Uh, where do websites work best? Um, and I'm assuming, um, Alan, that you're asking, like, in what scenarios does a traditional robust website with, like, plugins and capabilities work best? Which, which situations? You guys have any comments on that one? I, I would say, um, again, I, I'm very utilitarian here. I think of them as tools, and I think of what are things that a website does well that other things don't. And so one of them is if you wanted to sell online or pre-sell online, that is one, one avenue of that. If you wanted to, I do think that having a website can convey a level of professionalism and legitimacy to a business that, that like a Facebook page doesn't necessarily, on its own, doesn't necessarily do. If you had... Uh, if you wanted like an email subscriber list thing that you were trying to get going, if you wanted to use it like with a contact form to go straight to email or to schedule an appointment or something like that. Uh, I just did a talk to the um, Landscapers and Nursery Association about this and some of them, you know, they have landscaping jobs that they're trying to schedule and there are websites that have that functionality. Um, if you're committed to doing it and to, to maintaining it, I, I mean, I think a website's a great idea. It's kind of your, you have much more complete total control over the way you're presenting your business. I think sometimes though people just feel like they should have a website and so they do, and then it, it gets kind of outdated. Uh, in your context of having an apple orchard and a, and a fruit tree nursery, I could see it as a real effective way of communicating what apples are in season, what your stock on varietals is uh, at a given time, if, you know, events or something like that. I, I could see it as working, and I, I'll just, this isn't about web design, but um, there are platforms, and we have a, on our social, on our YouTube channel, we have a basics of web design video that you can go and watch if you want. It is possible to do it yourself. It's not terribly complex, uh, and it's in the budget would be in the hundreds of dollars, not in the thousands of dollars to uh, to do something like that. So, so there are areas where I think a website does work really well. Um, it's partially a matter of whether you you want to deal with it or not. Do you have any other thoughts, Camille, on like other things that maybe that come up about website particular? No, actually you hit on, I was going to say with the, having an apple orchard and you, know, you could list every variety and, you know, the seasons, um, say if you grow gala apples and honey crisp, you could have a little section where it says April to May, I have this variety and then May to June, I have this. So that way customers would, would be able to know like, oh, I don't like this variety, but I like this one. So I'll make sure to come around May and June to get the honey crisp or whenever that might be. So. Yeah, it might be a little, in that sense, it's a little easier to access than maybe say a Facebook page um, trying to find an, a previous post that said, oh, when, do I, when does he have the apples that I want? So, yeah. 
seems like a more static information that's like foundation information. I enjoy when I go to look for farmer's market hours or as Brett said, what's in season or what's for sale That's a or a premier product or some kind of commerce that I want to buy something and have something shipped to me. It seems like some of those plug-in type snap things um, websites do pretty good at. It's not like that they have a hot engagement of breaking topics, you know, really, really spur of the moment topics, but it's like a foundation that, you know, I still go and search for websites uh, just because I'm curious sometimes that for me, it adds legitimacy. I'll go on Facebook. I'll see something like a CSA or something, someone selling something on a farm. And what do I do? I go and try to see what kind of track record they have in a brick and mortar website. That's an old school attitude, but I'm just kind of curious of what kind of presence, you know, business businesses have. So for me, that's kind of how it is. Another, that's so I pulled up my old, my PowerPoint that I gave that. And one other thing that I didn't mention that could be a good thing for a website is like um, testimonials or like reviews from past jobs. It's a mm -hmm. nice, okay, that is one thing on like using that on social media too. Like if your if your customers are your biggest fans, getting them, getting testimonial information from them to say like, this is really awesome. Um it's another it's another angle that a website's good social media can be good too though but yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there is a place for them it's just whether you want to get into the to the work of managing yeah well thank you guys so very much uh if there's no other final comments or if no one wants to unmute and uh, ask specific questions um I guess next week the topic is same time same place on Wednesday at 5 30 next week is uh, getting into something that I really enjoy. And when I was a producer, I really enjoyed knowing more about, and that's price data and how to use price data to kind of more effectively market products. Um, anything else you guys on the topics for next week before we sign off here this evening? All righty. Lindsay, do you have anything else? I don't. Thank you everybody um, for joining in and we hope to see you next week. Thank you Thank all you. so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.